Right now, you're listening to the Azeem Digital Asks podcast, the podcast where I talk to some of the top marketers in the industry and find out what makes them tick. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Azeem Digital Asks podcast. In an absolute first for the podcast, I have got two guests today who you will definitely have heard of. We discussed before the episode giving them a comedy introduction and a proper introduction. So by way of a proper introduction, my guests today are Sarah and Hannah, the wonderful co-hosts of the awesome SOS. <laughs> we deserve <laughs> that. The wonderful co-hosts of the SEO SAS podcast. So that's the proper introduction, and they can tell you more about themselves in a minute. The comedy introduction is if you heard the episode where they had me as a guest on, I'm absolutely convinced they are in cahoots in the quiz section because Hannah won. So here's the comedy (laughs) introduction. My first guest is the awesome, amazing, absolute legend, someone who I'd absolutely love to meet for a drink and just put the world to rights, Sarah McDowell. And then she's joined by someone else called Hannah, don't really know a lot about her. Wow. (laughs) Thanks. So, yeah, welcome to the podcast. (laughs) So, Hannah has had a bit of a a difficult morning, um, but it's going to improve now because we're going to have lots and lots of laughs. Anyway, the episode is yours. Introduce yourself, wonderful people. (laughs) Sarah. What, what, am I going first? I mean, that's yeah. a big ask, isn't it? You know, I got to, I got to do you proud, Azim. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> so hello everyone. My name is Sarah, Sarah McDowell, and yes, like Azim has said, um, I am one of the co-hosts of the SEO SAS podcast, a weekly uh, podcast that delves into SEO topics where we're on a mission to make SEO fun and accessible for all. So all together we can get good at SEO, folks. Um, And then personally, I am just about to start a new role where Hannah's going to be my boss. So that's going to be interesting, (laughs) isn't it? Uh, Hannah will get to be bossing me around as I'm going to be joining her at Holland & Barrett as a SEO content specialist. Um, so, so that's me, and I'm I'm a bit of an SEO nerd. Um, so I love sort of delving into the topic, finding out different things, debating stuff, um, and and yeah. So, so that's me. Um, I'm a new auntie as well. I mean, you're gonna have to stop me because I could go on forever <laughs> just talking about absolute random nonsense. Um, but I am a um, a recent auntie to my wonderful nephew who is seven months old. Um, I always go to say seven month year old, and you don't don't need that, do you? You just need seven months. Yeah. Um, but he is so adorable, and I am full on being the cool aunt vibe. Uh, so yes, that is me. Wonderful, that's a nice one to follow. So um, yeah, I'm Hannah. I am Sarah's co-host or the half from an SEO point of view. Um, yeah, Partner and, in crime, absolutely, and delighted that I'm going to be working with Sarah again. Um, I obviously made this happen. It's all down to me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, twi- I twisted her arm, um, and I'm I'm absolutely thrilled that that she's coming to work with me. Um, but yeah, been doing the podcast for almost two years. Uh, other than that, uh, yeah, SEO for probably oh God, how long? About ten years. Um, and I'm married to somebody who also does SEO and search and does a p- bit of PPC as well. So, boo. But um, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> other than that, I've had a very emotional morning, had a bit of a cry already, and also had some pain inflicted, self-inflicted because of um, microblading. Um, yeah, and now I'm sat here listening via, well, talking via my laptop because my uh, my microphone decided to hate me. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, that's, that's me. But can I, I'm, I'm guessing that your eyebrows are on fleek right now. Yeah, the eyebrows look good. I mean, they still hurt a bit, but yeah. I mean, I, I did do them for you, Azim, because I thought I'd look my best for this, but there's not even a camera on, so. <laughs> do you want to know, I love podcasting because you don't really have to make, like, you have to sort of 
if if there is a camera, you dress yourself up from like the waist upwards, don't you? <laughs> bottom half can be pajamas, jogging bottoms, whatever whatever floats your boat. Um, but yeah, like, but I, we can all imagine how beautiful your eyebrows look, Hannah. Good. Well, that's worth it then. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> God, we're five minutes in and this has taken a weird turn already. <laughs> <laughs> right. So before we get into learning more about your podcast and yourselves, I have a question for you, which you absolutely not had the chance to <clears throat> cheat. Prepare yourselves <laughs> for. So and this time I want Hannah to go first, by the way, because the last two occasions Sarah's gone first. So no pressure, Hannah. Okay. okay. But imagine... You and Sarah swapped bodies. <laughs> What's the first thing that you'd do? Or what would you do as Hannah in Sarah's body? Where would you go? What would you do? Um, That's a really good question. Uh, what would I do? Maybe, do you know what? My, the first thing that came into my mind was go for a run. Because, um, yeah, Sarah's got a fantastic figure. And I imagine that actually it would feel quite nice to go for a run without all the extra weight that I would have to carry around normally. So, um <laughs> first thing that came into my mind i would go for a run there you go okay interesting and then sarah <laughs> oh well i mean thank you very much hannah i mean <laughs> you like you you make your sound sound you make yourself sound like a heifer when you're really not you have a wonderful figure as well you're beautiful so don't say stuff like that um well hannah has gorgeous hair like red wavy beautiful hair so i would spend like a good few hours looking at youtube like hair tutorials and trying all different like updos <laughs> and like you know taking on different personas and characters maybe do a little bit of a video montage because yeah you've got all this beautiful hair and why was that the first thing that came into my head I don't know but that's what I would do um also you're a fabulous baker so obviously I'd use those powers as well <laughs> and bake. so after my morning of video <laughs> montage of my different like hairstyles <laughs> I'd then bake everyone a beautiful cake that's Aww. vegan, of course. So, so yes. Is that what you expected, Azim? Are you happy with those? <laughs> well, it's going to run anyway, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, hair is a topic that I cannot provide any additional value to, so we will just move on immediately. <laughs> oh, you could, yeah, but you could, if you were in Hannah's body, you could do the same, Azim. You could get really, you know... Artistic with your different hairstyles. <laughs> to be honest, I would. Do you know what? Actually, this is a good point, right? So, if I was in one of your bodies, I would just see what it's like to use a hair straightener because how people just don't like set their heads on fire. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yes, they're very true. Yep. So, yeah. I've got one anyway. last thing that I would do. Go on. Like, I would take more risks because in my body, my body fails me so many times in the sense of like clumsiness, whereas Hannah's a lot more grounded and a lot more sensible. So I feel like I could get away with doing more stuff and not hurt myself as much. And if you did, it wouldn't matter because it's my body anyway. <laughs> yeah, after, then I would just hop on in my body and be like, enjoy, yeah. enjoy being in A&E, Hannah. Have yeah, fun. I'll visit you. <laughs> This is a level of savagery I wasn't expecting. <laughs> <laughs> right, on to more serious stuff. Let's talk a little bit about your podcast. Tell me how that came about. When did you realise that you were going to make this a thing and start SEO SAS? Did you want to do this one, Hannah? Or did, do you want me I'll to? I'll do a brief intro. Um, so basically, it was all Sarah's idea. And I realised that I was going to be in it when I kept saying... Yeah, I'll do it. But can we look at it next month? Can we look at it next month? This has come up. Can we look at it next month? And she was just like, I got to the point where I was like, I think my dad was in hospital and he'd been in hospital for a while and he was in um, utens intensive care. And I was like, look, just do it without me. I'm never going to get around to doing this. And she was like, no, we are doing this together. I will wait for you. So I was like, right, I'm in this, whether I like it or not, it's happening. Mm -hmm. So personally, that's when I knew. Um, but yeah, it was all Sarah's idea. <laughs> 
Well, I mean, I think, I think for me, it was so I've always like at uni, I was always part of the student radio. And um, I also worked at the local radio as well, um, putting together jingles and all that jazz. So I've always liked the idea of like radio and communication. And, and I'm a, a figure that I'm all right at talking um when I'm not saying like and so obviously and and stuff like that when my brain is trying to think of what I'm trying to say um but but yeah so there's always been that sort of history of like always wanting to sort of do something in this area um of speaking or something like that and also um when I first got into SEO it's a lot lot better now but when when I first got into SEO and I think Hannah would agree as well it was very male orientated and a lot of the podcasts out there were very like male orientated as well and we didn't come across at the time that many female-led podcasts about this about SEO basically so we I saw an opportunity um, and I think it was after going to Brighton SEO and, and things like that and being more aware um, and I just saw a really good opportunity because there are loads of amazing females in the industry doing so, so such amazing stuff um, I thought it would be a really good opportunity to have a platform where we can sort of promote and talk about that um, but also me and Hannah we we're really close um we're like yeah we're we're bffs as it were um (laughs) that's really cringy isn't it um and one of the things that we love talking about is seo and things like that so we're we're talking about that and it was like well we may as well have a podcast and do it on a platform um and also like with that we can learn stuff we can talk about things and we can hopefully with what we talk about and the guests that we get on, educate people as well. So, yeah. Nice, <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, look, I'm very, very honored to have you both on the podcast. Um, and I couldn't agree with you more. I think your podcast is great. And you are tons and tons of episodes in. Do you know how many? I think we've just gone past the 80 mark. Ooh. wowzers okay. so, so yes that is a long time isn't it it is indeed <laughs> thinking about that then so if you're 80 episodes in right imagine you could go back to when you recorded that pilot that very first episode if you knew now what you know then what would you what advice would you give to yourselves always research people's names and how to say them <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> Don't upset Azim. You need Azim on your side. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's a really good one. Um, <laughs> um, I mean, what I would add in is equipment matters as well. So obviously, um, quality and audio. It, so when me and Hannah first started, we used to share a microphone, didn't we, Hannah? <laughs> back, back in the good old days where we'd literally, where we, where we sat at like a dining room table. Yeah. Um, yeah, so very echoey. <laughs> uh, <fair laughs> microphone, and yeah, so I think we were quick to sort of realise that the sort of the audio quality and how you're recording is very important. Obviously, there's some things out of that you can't control, can you? Um, but things that you can control, um, yeah. So equipment and making sure that you've got that. And batch record as well. So when me and Hannah first started, we used to do it weekly, didn't we? We did. Yes, we did. <laughs> and it was it got to a point where it was uh even though we enjoyed it, it was feeling a bit like a an, another full time job because obviously you've got like the researching, you've got the editing, you've got the actual recording. So, so yeah, we quickly sort of decided to, instead of do it on a weekly basis, do more batch recording. And that sort of really helped us, didn't it, Ham? Yeah, massively. Yeah. I have been batch recording, um, but technically this is audio, so we could just absolutely lie. So at the moment, today's date is the 2nd of October. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surrounded by pumpkins. Yes, absolutely. That's Halloween what happens in October, is not... isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so given that you're so many episodes in and you've obviously been on such a journey, 
love your episodes and you can see like how much you've come on and the confidence has grown and the content just gets better and better it certainly wow. peaked a few weeks ago when you had this great guy i can't <laughs> remember his name um it'll come back to me yeah. him, <laughs> something like that <laughs> so what are some of the things that you've learned from your podcasting career sarah do you want to go first well um so i've personally learned new skills so that's what I've sort of, so obviously when we started the podcast, um, I sort of took on the role of the editing um, side of things in like the recording. And um, I mean, there's things that we sort of do together. So we like promote it and push it. Um, but whereas Hannah's more on, on the side of, would we call you like the producer if we're being professional? Like Hannah does <laughs> yeah, more we'll like the planning and the structure and the research because that's what you're awesome at and then um sort of I'm yeah so I'm the sort of the editor so getting the podcast together and stuff like that um so yeah I've learned skills of how to edit which has been awesome because I think it's always good to sort of learn new skills and learn new things to do also learned how to interview people which has been cool because obviously that was all new when we started to get guests on and things you have to like learn how to to interview people and you need to know when to basically stop talking to let the other person talk (laughs) (laughs) things like that and then other things that I've learned is because we because we invite people on to talk about subjects that me and Han aren't that clued up on we learn so so much in that respect as well so for example we've always wanted because obviously amazon is a like amazon is a sort of search engine in itself isn't it so people go to amazon straight away to look for things to buy and it was always a, a sort of subject that we wanted to cover but we wanted to wait until we could invite someone on to talk about it. Um, And I think, I mean, this is a bit clickbait, (laughs) but um, that episode is coming up next week or I don't know what, yeah, soon. It will be out. Oh, yes, it will already be out. Very true. Um, It's October, remember. Second of October today. It is October. (laughs) Going forward in time. Uh, But yeah, so obviously... Every time we get, an, we've had, um, so obviously Dan Saunders came on to talk about Amazon Amazon SEO. We've had Hamlet Batista to talk about Python. We've had Avij Abu Ali, Ruth Everett to talk about technical things. Yourself, Azeem, you came on to talk about diversity and the issues there. So every time we get a new guest, it's you learn something new. Mm. I love that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And one of the good things is I always think, right, what are they going to discuss this week? The fact that I don't know what the topic is as a listener makes me want to listen to it more. So mm. don't change that because that is awesome. Awesome. Yeah. My um, my points were, so firstly was actually how awesome it is to work with Sarah. So we've never done anything where it was just us two before. And like you are so reliable. I can really count on you. You never like you never let us down. Uh, And the second point that I thought was that the more fun you have, the better it sounds. Yes, definitely. Definitely. I think the ones where we've really enjoyed it and we've had a coffee before or do you know what I mean? It's just like, okay, we're on it. They're the ones that sound the best and they're the ones I'm most proud of because actually we've we've really, really enjoyed doing them. The ones that are a bit like... Oh God! Are we, like, is this right? Um, <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs> yeah, exactly. We've had a few of those in the in, in over the years. Where we've had to go back and be like, oh, do you know what? I don't even know if this sounds right. Yeah, that's a really good point. And I think because obviously when we you plan and we put plans together so we've got like a structure otherwise like it'd just be a weird and wonderful like (laughs) if there wasn't a structure it would be Sarah's inner thoughts just blah out in the world and Hannah trying to sort of like get get, get it back on track um but yeah you're so true like I the sort of podcasts that or when we get into a subject where we go a bit off piste or we end up talking about something that is not on the plan but that's just where the conversation has gone and I think those are the really interesting because you've always got your structure that you can then go back to but 
I love it when we get really stuck into a topic and we end up discussing things that weren't on the plan because yeah. that that's real gold for me. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you very much for that, Bob. So I think we've covered off your podcast pretty well there. Let's talk about you as individuals. So Hannah, you can go first this time. <laughs> Who is a big inspiration for you in the marketing industry? See, I love this question because it's not just SEO specific. So I think in SEO, you've got, and I mean, there's so many, again, going back to fantastic women, you've got Izzy, Aleda, Areed, Ruth. And I think most people don't even need the surnames for those people because actually they help people so much. They they put so much time and effort into SEO um, on, and online, on Twitter and things like that. And they they share, they, they give tips and that kind of thing. And they're epic and yeah, really, really awesome people. So they're massively inspirational to me. But then on a personal level, so for example, this weekend, um, I did some forecasting and it's definitely not my strong point. And my husband, who, like I said earlier, is also who also works in search, helped me no end just with the logic side of things. And I remember because we met at a marketing agency and he was technical SEO manager and he just sort of blew my mind with how technical and logical he is. And I was just like, wow, I wish I could be be more like this. Um, and yeah, so he, whether I, whether I like it or not, has always been an inspiration to me. Um, but then on, I guess the most, in, the biggest inspiration for me was when I um, was working at a different agency and um, the MD was um, called Alistair Campbell and he had been doing marketing all of his life, but he's, he was such an amazing guy, such a nice guy. And um, he just, I think he just sort of saw something in me and I sort of took me under his wing to, to help me grow. And that was the first time really where that had actually happened, where I'd actually learned from somebody and where they kind of let me really valued my opinion and gave me a lot of confidence. So yeah, I think um, in terms of who's been the biggest inspirations to me, you've got some really current, amazing people out there in the industry. I've got my my husband at home and then I've got Alistair, who sadly isn't alive anymore, um, but just added so much to my personal development and life. And I know he's done the same to lots of other people as well. And yeah, it's just, yeah. Re it, yes, yeah, so I've, I've been really lucky, I think. Awesome. Sarah? I mean, how do I follow that, really? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, um, Hannah, you've sort of pinpoint some really key people in the in the industry um, online and stuff. So obviously, some standout people that I would add to the list, because I had to circle the ones that you said, because I was like, well, I can't say them now. Um, but there are... <laughs> <laughs> well but there are other people like so Hannah Rampton uh she she gives so much um yeah. so she's amazing like if you've not heard of her before go on Twitter because she's always like learning and I kind of see her as like the Google Sheets queen and yeah. she just fantastic like she'll learn about something and want to share with it with the community then you've got um people like you've got Carrie Rose now she is a big inspiration as well because obviously she she She's one of the founders of 70 Rise at Seven. And obviously they're like killing it at the moment. Mm. And yeah, just like the campaigns that they do are so blooming out there and crazy. And they're just so creative. And I'm just so behind what they do. And Carrie Rose is really passionate about doing good things for clients, but also sharing that with the community. Um, you've also got people like Dawn Anderson, um, who does not take any... Can I swear on this podcast? Say what you like. It's your episode. Right. What I love about Dawn Anderson is she is so blimmin' intelligent, but she doesn't take any shit at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so I love I love what she stands for. You've got Brittany Muller as well. She's like AI machine learning queen who, again, gives... And what I love about the SEO community is that people want to help each other, don't they? And people want to support and people want to talk and, and, and things like that. Um, so, so, yeah. And then there's Luke Carthy, who... He was your first guest, wasn't he, Azim? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're working on getting him on. Um, so if, you can, <laughs> if you can put in a word for us, uh, because he, I read a book, Mastering In-House SEO, um, which was put together by Simon Schneiders at 
Blue Arrow. Is that his na- agency? Um, something like that. I should know. Is that even how you say his name? Schneid- Schneiders. <laughs> so I don't, don't question. <laughs> Just let me on that. Uh, but yeah, and he sort of, he shared a e-commerce story where basically um, there was an issue with UX and it seemed like a simple fix. Um, but that simple fix, man, like skyrocketed the amount of sales and stuff and sometimes and the the lesson there is about like user experience and how your website performs and even like the smallest because we all know that with seo it's all about marginal gains isn't it and all about what you can do to up your competitors but also it's about like making the experience on a website or an e-commerce site as easy for people to buy and don't put any obstacles in your way so um, but obviously he does so much more sort of thing so that's on the sort of online sort of seo specific but then personally um this is where you might need your sick bucket but hannah i put you on my list here oh. um, because i did wonder i was like can i put her on and i was like oh no um, it'll be cheese. <laughs> cheese cheese alert cheese alert but no like obviously the reason i'm putting hannah on is because hannah Hannah, we have we have our band and we take the mick out of each other. We're really close and you're very loyal and I love you to pieces. But what I really love is that you are so supportive and you push me in a good way. Not like those, you know, those pushy parents who are like getting their child to do all crazy things. I don't mean that. Like you see, you, I feel like I, I get the most out of myself and you're part of that reason because you push me and you're like, come on, Sarah. So... You're on my list here, um, Thank so you. I'll I'll pause so people can sick into a bucket if they that need means to do a lot. that. <laughs> and then other people on my list is um, so my my previous boss Paul Ince, also known in the industry as Biz Paul. He's fantastic. So he's like a friend, mentor. Um, I've learned so much from him and yeah like he's really pushed me he was one of the reasons why I got into podcasting as well and he's just very supportive and when he was my boss he was just he was more of a friend than a boss Um, and also my boss before that so my ex ex boss is that the right way of saying it Uh, but Tim Elliott because again he was very much just do stuff Sarah because sometimes I think people can hold themselves back because Mm. they're they're scared or it's not quite right or they don't feel that they can or something's not quite perfect whereas Tim was very much you just got to do it get something out there if you want to try it like you're much better at regretting something that you've done than regretting something that you've not done so I've Mm. always tried to live by that now um because yeah I want to try stuff and I want like within reason I'm not going to say yes to crazy stuff um (laughs) (laughs) um, but yeah so yeah I'm going to stop blabbing now um so yeah that's my answer brilliant I am sure that they will all love hearing that they've had such an influence on both of you together awesome great stuff You mentioned at the start of the episode that you are soon to be working together. Tell me more about that, how it's going to work, what the challenges are. I think, um, so at Holland and Barrett at the minute, we are in a fortunate position where things are very busy and we're going through a stage of digital transformation. So um, digital is getting even more focus. Um, it's, It's blowing up basically. And it's a really, really exciting time to be with the business. And that's kind of what twisted my arm when I, when, when I saw the job for my job on LinkedIn about, um, I think it's about five months ago, four or five months ago now. Uh, no, sorry, that's when I started. It was about seven months ago. And I thought, okay, well, I'll go and I'll go for an interview, but I probably won't end up going for it because I quite like it at Gymshark. And, uh, I remember at the interview saying to my boss, oh, crap, I've actually really got to consider this now because this is so exciting. And it it really is. There's just so much going on. So the biggest, um, I guess, challenges that we've got is how much of it to take on, how quickly um, and what to what to focus on first. So this is this is why we need Sarah. Um, We need Sarah's expertise. We need her passion and drive and energy. And um, yeah, it's going to it's going to really, really help. She's like a big missing puzzle piece. Um, Yeah, I'm going to stop blabbing. (laughs) 
<laughs> awesome. Sarah, how would you feel about that? I mean, I've got some flipping uh, boots to fill, haven't I, really? Um, <laughs> but no, I'm very excited. So um, I'm all up for, a new, it's going to be a new challenge. Um, and I'm, I can't wait to sort of like get started and get stuck in. Um, and I think together, like obviously um, I joke about Hannah bossing me around and stuff, but <laughs> I think <laughs> I think we'll work together well. And because we're really close and, and stuff, I think it's going to be, it's going to be good and I just can't wait to get started and get stuck in um and any challenge that comes our way we're just gonna have to deal with it and yeah um but I'm very much looking forward to it yeah awesome it sounds like you two are on to something brilliant which is great tell me then about yourselves how you continue to learn how do you sort of make sure that your knowledge is either in line or on top of the industry where how and where do you learn things um, well, for me, it's it's consuming information online um, or in other podcasts. So, yeah, I'll, I, I really like Alida Silas's um, SEO FOMO newsletter. I think that's amazing. And I'll always um, make sure I, I put time aside to go through that. And then you've obviously got the Think with Google and that kind of stuff. Um, sign up to Google Webmasters emails. Um, you've got Search Engine Land, Search Engine Journal. I think it's always good to keep your eye on those and what's happening. But then Twitter's amazing. Um, anything shared by Barry Adams, I think, is always very valuable. Um, same for Claire Carlisle, same for um, John John Mueller. I want to say Mueller. Again, is another name I need to check out. People call him Mueller. Mueller. I don't get it. I think it's Mueller, but, yeah, I'm going to keep saying Mueller. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I think, I think Twitter for me, but also planning podcasts because sometimes I do have to research things and it's really helpful. So, yeah, it's just nice to, to keep on top of things that way where if there's a topic that actually is going to help us in our jobs or it's going to help somebody we've spoken to recently that actually take we need to delve a bit deeper. Um, researching for those really helps me too. Mm. I mean, I would, there's not much more that I can add. I mean, um, obviously there's some really good sort of newsletters um, put together. I've recently signed up to Christina's Marketing Syrup one. Um, and that's amazing because that's very, that she's e-commerce focused and she's, um, yeah, they're not very long at all. Like what I like about Ladies is that it's very meaty, isn't it? There's so much resource in there. Whereas with Marketing Syrup by Christina, it's more punchier and um, like she'll just pick one topic to sort of like delve into. Um, but yeah, I'm like you, Han. I love um, Search Engine Journal and all that stuff. Um, I do put time aside for a Moz Whiteboard Friday because they're <laughs> 10 minutes long. Um, I mean, one day, you never know, me and Han might do a double act on there. Are you listening <laughs> to anyone from Moz? <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the other bits that I would say is obviously um, doing the pod, like doing our podcast, we learn listening to podcasts you learn because obviously as soon as you started this podcast um Azeem you were straight on the list and um I think you were doing a fantastic job and you're getting some really key people on yeah um conferences obviously COVID a bit hard at the moment um and I don't know how I really feel about virtual ones because I like to be there um but then the other thing that I would say is making friends in the industry so um I've sort of um, been making more friends in this industry because I think then um, you can have more conversations because conversations are key, aren't they? Um, because obviously you can have conversations on Twitter and LinkedIn. Um, Slack, Women in Tech SEO, Han, that's a good one, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Really, really helpful if you're stuck on something. You've got a whole group of people who will all, there'll be someone who replies and helps you out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's loads of different ways that you can consume. Um, I'd love to say that I'm always reading a book, but I've not read a book in flipping years. So um, maybe that's <laughs> on my to-do list. Um, but yeah, so conversations, like even even the conversation that we're having today, somewhat like you'll you'll learn something, won't you? So um, yeah. yeah, absolutely. I've learned what microblading is. That's for, for that's for sure. <laughs> Sounds like torture, really. It's worth it. It's worth it. Right, so let's move on and let's talk about failure. <laughs> what would you say? It's not funny, unless you think failure is funny, but yeah. <laughs> so much sass. <laughs> <laughs> if 
That's why Sarah is my favourite. Anyway, no tension here, isn't there? This is not good. <laughs> <laughs> we need a rematch. We should. We should. We, we should. might do one at the end. Right. <laughs> tell me then. In the last twelve months, what do you think has been the biggest failure for you, and why do you think it happened? Oh, you would make me go first with this one. Right, I'm going to take the ball with the horns. Right, so my biggest failure is, um, so obviously I was, before that, my new role was going to be in-house with Holland About. So before that, I was at the agency Like My Media. And I think one of the biggest failures, I would say, is getting people bought in or knowing the importance of SEO. Um, I think that's the biggest failure because obviously, and also explaining what I mean when I talk about it as well. Um, so I think, I think if, if you don't, if you're not in the sort of SEO world and you don't understand it, um, you, you're not going to understand the importance of it, are you? And you're not going to, uh, so for example, um, any sort of changes that you do to your website, even even if you think it's small or minor or it's not going to make an impact, anything that you do does. Um, so I think the biggest failure for me is getting across to clients how important it is about um, like getting SEO. Because one of the key things that we say on our podcast is that SEO should be interwoven. Is that the right word, Han? Interwoven? Absolutely. Um, Yes, interwoven into everything that you do. Um, and I think I got frustrated because sometimes like SEO is always th the afterthought. Whereas I think if there was more education with clients and, um, and people before that, then it wouldn't be an afterthought because they know the um, sort of importance. So I think as an SEO person, I probably failed there because um, obviously I know, but I was obviously not getting that point across. Awesome. Hannah? Um, I think mine, I've gone, I suppose, a bit more personal, really. But I think um, my biggest failure over the last year has definitely been work-life balance. So I've definitely let friends down and my husband down a bit um, in terms of having to cancel on them because I'm refusing to let standard slip at work, um, whether that's letting somebody down at work because they need something and it's quarter to five at night and I know it's not going to take 10 minutes. Um, um, yeah, I've, I've definitely put my work first a lot and I don't think that's a bad thing to do, but I think I need to work on that. That's something that personally I need to, to find a better balance for. Um, yeah, I don't know how, but I'm, I am working on it. <laughs> As, well, you definitely don't seem like a failure to me. Go on, Sarah. I was just going to say, you're not, a, you've not, you've not let anyone down. Like your friend, your friends, family, Dom. Like you probably feel it because work does take is demanding and it is it is hard work and stuff. But if you act like you've not let anyone down, like it can feel like that. But personally, myself, I know, like, because I've, yeah because I've needed you over the past couple of weeks um, and you've always been there. So um, you. You, you're not letting anyone down. I think you're just, because you've got such a sort of good work ethic and you want to do good and, and, and it's great. Um, but yeah, don't don't think that because of that, you're letting people down because you're not. Just isn't Aww. FYI. <laughs> Thanks, Definitely also, feeling the love. Sorry, yeah, on your point as well. I mean... For saying that you're not very good at explaining SEO stuff to people. I mean, I think all of our podcast listeners will disagree with that. I think it's different when it is to clients and when you're trying to get them to put their money against SEO. So, but yeah, don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I, I disagree with your failure as well, because I don't think you are bad at that in the slightest. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting a bit emotional, right. Zim. Did you know it's going to be Hello. such an emotional episode? No, I absolutely did not. <laughs> <laughs> right, so we'll have a bit of fun before we close out the episode. If well, It's going to be a weird one, to be honest, because you guys have your own podcast, so you do this all the time. But imagine you could ask yourself a question that I haven't asked you already. What would it be? Oh, I, I mean, I've got one. Shall I go first? Yeah. Okay. What job would you do if SEO didn't exist? No? Yeah, it's awesome. Is that isn't that a good question? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. So Hannah, you can go first then. If SEO didn't exist, 
and you cannot say PPC, what job would you do? <laughs> <laughs> if SEO didn't exist, um, what would I be doing? Hmm. I mean, we did we did do something similar to this on our podcast. So I'm not going to use those same ones because I feel like that would be a cop out. Um, what would I be doing? I would be living in a hut on the side of a mountain um selling charms <laughs> healing charms <laughs> well maybe maybe okay interesting <laughs> sarah i've got a couple got a couple ones um i'd <laughs> Because I had time to think about this, obviously. Um, so I'd like to do more for charity. So like sort of be like a charity fundraiser, event manager, charity. I don't know, like getting more support and getting um, money raised for awesome charities and organizations out there that need more support. Um, or event management, because I, I love putting together sort of parties or events and stuff like that. Like, I love the sort of journey of it and I get that it's stressful. But then at, at the end, when you've put it all together and everyone's having a fun time, that's always amazing. Um, obviously, I shouldn't really pick event management in COVID, but, you know, um, didn't really think that one through. Um, or my last <laughs> one would, I always like the idea of like having my own sort of like coffee shop um that's that sells obviously it'd be vegan hannah Yay. yeah and i'd love to do sort of like teaching cooking sort of thing because i i think cooking is a and it would be free as well so somehow i'd have to work out how to fund that um but cooking is such an indispensable tool because obviously um food is linked to like well-being, health, um, all that fitness sort of thing. Uh, so I'd have this like cafe doing all my cool like different coffees, and I'd have a, pap- a puppuccino for the for the dogs. I'd have a baby chino for oh. the babies. Um, but then I'd also like to teach people. I mean, when I said that, because I was talking to my sister about this, she was like, you need to know how to cook and be quite good, Sarah. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I can cook a few things. <laughs> so that's my... That's my answer. Love it. Awesome. While you've been given your answer, I've just been thinking about what I would answer to this question, so I'm going to say it anyway. Awesome. Yes. Um, this is going to make you laugh, right? Because uh, in my head, I know what I want to say, but when I come to actually let the words come out of my mouth, it's going to really fall flat on its ass. <laughs> so obviously, you guys know I enjoy uh, getting fit, right? Yep. Yes. So the cop out, the cop out answer would be right if this isn't it didn't exist I would probably be a personal trainer but thinking about it right have you ever watched those programs where astronauts uh, prepare to go into space yeah. by putting their bodies under extreme stress on wow. those machines that spin you round and round and round really fast you should do a tv program I think <laughs> I would like to be <laughs> I would like to be the person that operates that machine that spins people around really fast <laughs> Because I would just turn that dial to like 12 and just watch people's faces. <laughs> Brilliant. I love so, yeah. how niche that is. That I is love neat. how, yeah, I mean, that someone has to have that job, don't they? Absolutely. Absolutely. And if it was me, then there wouldn't be many astronauts. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Good job there's SEO, right? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> right. Back on point. SEO. Before we end the podcast, I want you both to give one marketing tip that will help people do their jobs better. Come on, Han. You, you're full of them. You knowledgeable, okay. wise owl. You. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Just align. Make sure you align with other, other departments. Get to know them like you were working in their department. So in an ideal world, know, you would know all of what is going on in marketing, digital marketing, and so when they're talking about cost per acquisition or, um, I don't know, uh, engagement metrics for social media or open rate for email, you, you understand what those mean. And therefore, if there are challenges, you can hopefully help each other or at least be there for, for support or see how you can ramp things up for the for the greater good of the business. Um, but also just so you have a clue what they're going on about in meetings. <laughs> so you're not just like sat there nodding like yeah, yeah. that's a good one Han Ooh. I should have gone first because how am I going to follow that 
Um, what am I marketing? Sorry. You always follow fine. You say that and then it's like, you just blow mine out of the water half the time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, mine's a bit... Um, okay, my marketing tip is always be curious and don't be afraid to admit if you don't know something. Mm. So when I first started in the industry, I thought that I had to know everything. And if there was a term or something that was spoken about that I didn't know, or I wasn't aware, I'd not come across it before. I thought that was a failure on my part because I am the SEO person. I should know all this when it's hard to know everything. And especially, I think we spoke about this Han, like um, if you don't have experience, if something doesn't come up in your job, um, and you've not had experience in doing something. I think we were talking about something technical, weren't we, Han, about this? Yeah. Um, right, HREF land tags. I mean, HREF land tags are a, a minefield anyway. Um, mm. But it's okay not to know stuff, and it's okay to sort of ask questions. And the great thing about SEO is there's such a community, especially on Twitter, there's a bit on LinkedIn, but my go-to would be Twitter. But people are there to help you. And and yeah, take the time to, if, you, if there's something that you don't know about, take the time to learn, ask questions and, and things like that. And just don't, don't be under the impression that you have to know everything all the time. And also with SEO, um, it's okay to fail because that's when you fail, you learn, don't you? Um, mm. I mean, if you fail and then don't take anything on board and you just do the same thing as you did last time, that's not great. <laughs> Whereas if you try something, it doesn't work, you look into, okay, why did that not work? Um, because SEO is not a one size fits all. Um, what works for one business industry sector website won't be the same for something else. So you just got to try stuff. And also one last thing, where does my brain go? One last thing, don't take things as gospel until you've tried it yourself. There's so many people that just um, like, so loads of people are marketing gurus. I hate that word. Um, don't know why I said it in that weird way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but don't take things as gospel and don't spiel it off to other people unless you've not, like, you've tried it yourself. Don't, yeah, just take, like, it's great that people are giving each other advice and that's great, but test it yourself before sort of sticking by it sort of thing fountain of tips fountain Absolutely. uh what's it called what a spray um in your garden you know when you set up sprayers a what sprinkler. are they called a sprinkler i'd like to think that was a sprinkler of knowledge sprinkler <laughs> <laughs> and you were worried about following kind of i know i, just... I went first there wouldn't have been any time for me <laughs> <laughs> right just before you go then i want you to just give me the first answer that comes into your head you need maximum productivity you need to get in that zone uh sarah you need to just block hannah's demands out of your ears <laughs> and vice versa <laughs> what song artist playlist what are you listening to hannah you can go first because sarah will take about half an hour go on. <laughs> uh, fighters. easy <laughs> nice any particular song um times like these mm. okay sarah dario g sunshine mm. interesting interesting see songs like that i would just think i can't listen to them passively uh, sorry yeah passively is the right word i'd have to try and sing along and no i will not give you any now but <laughs> i wouldn't be able to i wouldn't be able to concentrate on stuff like that foo fighters just make me want to just run faster or like pick up something yeah anyway listen this has been brilliant absolutely loved having you two on i thought it would be a right kahoot and it has been um <laughs> thank you so just before you go tell my two listeners who are also my two guests how they can find out about each other <laughs> where can people find out about you or get in touch um, so you can email us hello at seosaspodcast.com or both on Twitter. So Sarah is Sarah McDuck, which is M-C-D-U-K, or I am originally SEOSAS Hannah because I couldn't think of anything better. Um, yeah, that's about it, isn't it, Sarah? Well, um, Hannah does spend most weekends somewhere on a mountain. So that's a good shout as well. So if you want to try <laughs> and find Hannah, she'll be on a mountain with a protein bar 
probably a flapjack um, <laughs> of sorts, taking the greenery. So that's another way that you can get in touch with her. <laughs> Love it. Thank you. <laughs> right. Thank you both very much for being awesome guests on the podcast. I'm going to shut up now and let both of you have the last word on this episode. Oh, oh, I mean, that is a lot of pressure. I would just like to say, Izzy, and thank you so, so much for having us loose on your podcast. And I hope um, listeners get something from us today. And I just want to say you are doing incredible stuff in the industry yourself, um, because I know you're very sort of passionate about the diversity issues and you're really good at highlighting what's going on um but in a a way that's not confrontational and aggressive but in a way that's um that's positive and gets changed so i just want to say you're doing incredible stuff and it's a, a real pleasure to come on your podcast today <laughs> and to follow that i'm going to agree with everything that sarah just said <laughs> um and also just say that i still love you even though sarah's your favorite So that was another great episode in the bag. I'm really enjoying hearing from some of the top names in this industry and I hope that you are too. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a rating, like, share and subscribe. You can find out more about the podcast on the Twitter page at Azeem Digi Asks, all one word, and also on my website, which is IamAzeemDigital.com. Also, if you'd like to be a guest on a future episode, you can get in touch with me via my website. And that's it from me. Looking forward to the next episode already. Take care.